Getting intricate cardstock cuts with your Cricut can be quite challenging, especially because there are so many different things that you need to consider when you're actually cutting something really fine on your Cricut. I love being able to cut so many different intricate things, and this kind of little checklist that I have really helps me to get the intricate cuts that I do get with my Cricut machines, and I wanted to share that with you today. My name is Kelly Rousseau, and let's get clacking. Now this checklist will be a little bit different whether you're using vinyl or cardstock. Though a lot of the principles remain very much the same between both cardstock and vinyl, there are obviously a few differences, but I'm gonna be focusing solely on cardstock for this video. It's also very difficult to say which one is kind of the most important because a lot of them are kind of just as important as the next one, but there are of course two or three things that are pretty much the most important and the others are just refining your intricate cuts. So if you're not getting maybe the perfect intricate cut, then that'll just help refine it just a little bit more. <laughs> Typically, when troubleshooting your cardstock cuts, if your cardstock is bunching up and kind of tearing in certain places, generally that means that your cut setting is too high, your pressure is too high. So what you would need to do is then lower your pressure. And if your blade is not cutting all the way through the material, then that means that your pressure is too low, or that you might need an additional pass or put the multi-cut setting on. That I like to use as a general rule of thumb when looking at each one of these settings on intricate cuts. And I hope that you don't have to employ every single method. I'm just covering pretty much everything that I can think of in this video because there are so many different aspects and so many different things that can affect your cut. That doesn't mean to say that they will because very often it comes down to your mat and your cut settings. But if you're finding that you need to refine your cut just that little bit more, then all of these extra things that I'm covering will all play a small part in getting the perfect, perfect cut. You first want to make sure that you have a cutting mat that is super sticky. Now, obviously, we're not going to talk about like a strong grip cutting mat because that's going a little bit too far and that can actually damage your cuts. But a very good or a very new light grip mat or a very new standard grip mat also works very well. Now, this one might take a little bit of trial and error to get right if you have multiple different mats. There's a couple things you need to consider when it comes to your mats and getting your intricate cuts. As an example, we have this mat. Now, while this mat has a lot of stick to it, and if I put my hand on it, we can see that it is not moving anywhere. It's very grippy. The problem with this mat is that it has a lot of deep indent cuts on it, which are really difficult to capture on camera, but we can see just how kind of well loved this mat is. This would not be my first choice when it comes to getting intricate cuts. Although I could probably still get really decent cuts on this one. If you're looking for a really, really intricate design, then this might not be my first choice. And I try and judge the stickiness of my mat by my mat protector. So I can still hear when I'm trying to take the mat protector off that it is sticking to the mat quite well. So I know that this one has a lot of grip. The light grip mat, on the other hand, the mat protector comes off with absolutely no complaining whatsoever. So I know that even though there is still some stick to this mat, I might not be able to get the absolute best intricate cuts on this mat. This mat is well loved, as you can see, but also has some very deep cuts in it that mean that if I'm doing something super intricate, I won't be able to get super, super good designs. The stick on the mat is pretty much okay, but I would definitely need to use my brayer on this mat if I had to try intricate cuts. This mat would probably be my first choice when it comes to getting intricate cuts. And if you do a lot of intricate cuts, you might also want to keep a mat aside, maybe even put some vinyl on the mat protector that says intricate cut mat. I like having different mats for different things. So having an intricate cut mat might actually work out quite well for you. We can hear the mat protector complains when it's being pulled off. It's got a lot of stick, as we can see, and there aren't many very deep grooves in this mat. So this would be my first choice when it comes to intricate cuts. The next thing that is super, super duper important are your cut settings. Now the cut settings, again, like I said at the beginning, these are probably the most important. 
Your mat grip and your cut settings are probably the two most important parts of getting an intricate cut or a really good intricate cut rather. So make sure that when you are in the beginning stages of your project, you do your test cuts or if you want to do all the design work first and then worry about the cut settings, you can follow this method that I like to use. So on the canvas, when you have your design, you know, all set up, we're going to click on shapes and then I'm going to add the star. Now I'm going to specifically add the star that has the narrower points and not the one with the slightly thicker, wider points. I'm going to add that one to my canvas. Because I use the metric system, I'm going to reduce the size to about one centimeter. But if you're using the imperial system, you can do a third of an inch or something like that. As long as it's really small so that you know that you're getting like a super fine cut. Now you may even have your design on your mat, so that's fine. And then we're going to click make. And you'll see obviously the star is in the top left hand corner of your mat. Make sure that wherever you put the star to do your test cut, it's not going to be overlapping something that you want to cut later. So if you're cutting words and you're going to need to be cutting that section, just make sure that the star, wherever its placement is, you're not going to need that little section for your words once you're done. So you might want to move it around on your mat, place it somewhere where you know that you're not going to have any media there. You do want this to be a different color to anything else that you have on your mat as well. So if, for example, you wanted to cut this tiger, you need to make sure that the tiger and the star are two different colors. So they currently are because the tiger is black and the star is gray. But if they were the same color, you would have them on the same mat like you see here. And then that would defeat the entire purpose of being able to do a test cut with just the little star. As you want to test the cut setting first, and then once that cut is done, you want to then go back onto a different mat and then cut the actual item that you want to cut. So as an example, we could leave the star in the top left hand corner because it's not going to overlap anywhere where that design is. But again, we don't want to cut them both at the same time because we want to test the cut setting first. So we would need to have this on a separate mat just like this so that we can cut the mat with a star first and then the second cut that we're going to do the second kind of pass that we're going to do is going to be the beautiful design that we've chosen so with your mat with the star selected we're going to click continue connect to our machine and the biggest tip that I can give you is to use the cardstock for intricate cuts setting. Now, this will very much depend on the type of cardstock that you're going to use. I tend to use a lot of medium cardstock. That's our 80 pound or 216 GSM cardstock. It's the cardstock that people use the most, the most generally or widely available. American Crafts, Couture Creations, many different companies make cardstock just like that. It's the perfect middle ground cardstock. And for this, the cardstock for intricate cut setting is the one that I like to use. What it does is instead of doing a slightly heavier pass and just cutting it all through once, it'll actually do a pass with a lighter pressure and then it'll cut twice. So that means that it's not dragging the blade too hard against the cardstock and it's actually using a softer, almost like a pairing technique if you were to you know, think about slicing things. It uses lighter cuts and it goes over them twice just to make sure that the cut is going through and in all honesty I cut almost all of my designs on cardstock for intricate cuts even if it's just a plain circle I find I get cleaner cuts and I don't have as many problems with that particular cut setting. Now if you have tried the cardstock for intricate cut setting and you find it's not quite cutting it <laughs> I'm going to click on browse all materials and then at the bottom of the screen, you'll see it says material settings. That's where we want to actually change the pressure on that cut. So if you find maybe it's cutting too deep and it's cutting into your mat a little bit too much, or it's not cutting through because your cardstock is a little thicker. Now, this will depend on your cardstock, the type of cardstock that you're using. So make sure to tailor it to the exact type of cardstock that you're using and maybe even create multiple different cut settings if you're using different kinds of cardstock. If you're using a light cardstock, you'll need a lighter pressure. If you're using heavier cardstock, you'll need a heavier pressure. So we really want to tailor the cut settings that we have for the exact type of cardstock that we're using. The medium cardstock, we would use cardstock for intricate cuts. Like I said, if you're doing an intricate cut on a lighter cardstock, you will probably need to create 
uh, intricate cuts for light cardstock setting. So we're going to click on material settings, scroll right the way to the bottom, and we're going to click add new material. This is if we're going to be adding a new material for our intricate cuts on light cardstock, as an example. Once you've clicked add new material, we're going to give it a, a material name. So I'm going to put this as intricate cuts light cardstock and we're going to click save and this is how we set up our cut settings so i'm just going to scroll up so that until we can see the pressure setting that cardstock for intricate cuts uses and it's all in alphabetical order so we'll need to scroll up a little bit further and here we can see it's a 210 pressure and it's got a two times pass using the fine point blade which is perfect so we're going to scroll back down until we reach our setting and I'm going to move this little green dot up a little bit maybe I'll put it on 195 and then I'll put the passes on two or the multi cut as they like to call it so it'll then cut the same design twice what I would do with this cut setting that I create is first of all I would save it but then I would do another test cut on that cut setting to make sure that it is actually cutting correctly if I find that it just doesn't cut through, I'll then come back and increase the pressure by five to 10, depending on how much it's cut through or how little it's cut through. And I highly recommend testing and retesting until you find the cut setting that works for you very well. If you find the star isn't quite working for you, then maybe choose a small design that is quite intricate that you can test. I definitely wouldn't test it with an entire 12 by 12 of cardstock as you'll then run through a lot of cardstock until you find the right setting. Each machine is a little bit different because they require such delicate calibration. So any cut settings that I use may not be perfect for your machine. They will generally work for a very wide range of machines or different models. So that's why Cricut is able to set up these cut settings as a default. But as an example, my Maker 3 likes a little bit more pressure. So any of the cut settings that I use, I've always got to scale up a little bit. And I know that because it's, I've had to do that with many different cut settings. So over time, you'll probably get to learn your machine and know that it requires, you know, just a little bit of tweaking here or there. One of the next important things that you need to consider is the sharpness of your blade. Cutting cardstock wears a blade down more than cutting vinyl, as the material itself is more abrasive and requires more pressure to cut through, and it's not as soft and pliable, etc, etc. So when it comes to cutting very fine, intricate details with your blade, if you've cut a lot of craft board and maybe your blade is, you know, a year old, maybe your blade needs a little bit of a cleaning or maybe you need a new blade to be able to cut properly on your machine you might also need a premium blade as the premium blade is different from the standard fine point blade it's made of german carbide steel lasts longer than the general normal fine point blade cricket says by about two to three times so potentially consider getting one of those instead of just getting the fine point blade as it'll dull a lot slower I find that that kind of thing is really difficult to test, so I haven't been able to accurately test it myself, but I have a premium fine point blade in my machine and it works beautifully. You might need to just take the blade out of the machine, push the little tip in so the blade part pops out and is exposed. You can clean it with an alcohol swab, maybe there's a little bit of gunk on that blade itself, or you can even shove it into a ball of foil. Doing the foil trick does not sharpen your blade. It just removes any debris off your blade and maybe removes any nicks or burrs that might not be visible to the human eye, but may help with getting your cuts a little bit better. I also find tools like my brayer absolutely essential when it comes to getting a, a good intricate cut. If my mat is maybe not brand new and maybe I've used it, you know, 20, 30 times. Using the brayer to make sure that the cardstock is stuck down everywhere onto the mat is so important. The cardstock really needs to be stuck down well because if you think about it, you're severing the connection between the cardstock and the rest of the sheet. So the little section that you cut needs to be stuck down onto the mat in order to stay still while it is being cut. And if the adhesive on your mat is not good enough, then it'll actually start lifting off. Now, of course, this is tied to having a good clean mat, but also using the brayer means that even if your mat is maybe not as brand new, 
and using a brand new mat can also be a little bit jarring, especially when you're using cardstock. But using the brayer means that the cardstock gets stuck down better to your mat. So it'll mean better cut and fewer problems. If you're relatively new to cardstock crafts and you want to try out many different things but you don't really know where to start or maybe you're a little bit overwhelmed, don't stress, I've got you covered. I've put together a Cricut Cardstock Jumpstart ebook. Now this ebook has over 50 pages of helping you to get your cardstock crafts off the ground. From cleaning your mat, to what kind of cardstock you need to use for your project, what kind of adhesive you need to use, teaching you how to use your Cricut pens. So, so, so much more. You can print this out and have it with you and work through it. And I've even included a free printable, which is a project diary. Now this project diary will help you with each different project that you do, keeping note of what cut settings you used, what material you used, and even detailing the problems that you had and how you solved them. I am launching this ebook on the 14th of February. If you want a sample and to be notified when my ebook goes live, check the description down below. I've poured weeks into getting this ebook together and I'm ridiculously excited to share it with you. At only $15 for a 50 plus page workbook to help you get all of your cardstock crafts on, it is an absolute steal. Can't wait to hear what you think about it and your support means the absolute world to me. One of the other things that you need to consider when you want to get intricate cuts on your cardstock is, is my design too small? Now we are talking about cardstock and a blade that drags through the material. And although our crickets can perform beautiful, beautiful cuts, they do have their limits. When it comes to cutting our super intricate designs, when you're working with a millimeter or one and a half millimeters or very, very, very thin designs, there will be a limit to how fine your machine can cut. So keep that in mind that even though the machine can do really, really intricate things, if you are really struggling to get that very fine detail, you may just be pushing the machine a little bit too far. Another thing to keep in mind is the type of cardstock that you're actually going to be using. I use a lot of American Crafts cardstock, mainly because it's the most widely available cardstock that I have in South Africa, but it is widely available and widely used for a good reason. It is great cardstock. Make sure that you're keeping it dry away from moisture because that will also affect your intricate cuts. So use a moisture remover or an airtight container that you can store your cardstock in so that it doesn't get wet or pick up too much moisture. But we also have a brand in South Africa called Butterfly. And although this is a local brand of cardstock or paper rather, it really, really isn't all that good for intricate cuts. Even when you're cutting just regular stars, the cuts are messy, the cardstock tears. It's just really not a good cardstock to cut on your machine, whether it's intricate cuts or just normal cuts. So if you are struggling with a very particular type of cardstock, maybe try a different brand or try a different type as it could, of course, be the cardstock that you're using. Handmade cardstocks are an absolute no for intricate cuts. You could probably get general, you know, usual shapes like this on your cardstock, but no intricate cuts because of the way that the cardstock is actually physically made. I know that it has something to do with like the length of the fiber and the way that the fiber is laid on the actual cardstock. I'm not an expert, so I'm not gonna try and pretend to know everything about how cardstock is made, although I would absolutely love to go on like a tour of how cardstock is made in the American Crafts Cardstock Company factory or something like that. I mean, that would be a dream come true. So American Crafts, if you're listening, let me know. <laughs> but the type of cardstock that you're using is also going to play a very big role. Now, funnily enough, the color of the cardstock also makes a difference as to how the cuts are going to be and what your cut setting needs to be. As an example, my black AC cardstock, I find never quite cuts through on the cardstock for intricate cut setting. I've always got a put the pressure on too high, or maybe try like a slightly different pressure setting in order to get it to cut through. So if you are having problems with your cardstock and it's just one particular color that you're having problems with, then you might need to create an additional setting just for that specific color because life isn't complicated enough apparently. <laughs> 
When it comes to the color of your cardstock, if you think about it, the black cardstock has a lot more pigment in it. And a light blue cardstock, or maybe something closer, a little bit more to a natural color, might have a lot less pigment in it. So the pigment might actually affect the fibers, which can affect the way that the blade drags through the material. So it's just something else that we have to consider that the cut settings to get your perfect cut might be different on different colors. I have also seen a few times on social media where people have posted that the direction of the cardstock matters. Now, when it comes to AC cardstock, I've never particularly seen that the direction of the cardstock matters. But as an example, like the brand that we get in South Africa, Butterfly, I feel that when you're struggling with an intricate cut on a particular cardstock, you might want to test to see that the direction of the cardstock might make a difference. This is something that I would imagine working with a square piece of cardstock would matter. So if you're working with A4, maybe try cutting it because you're gonna have different resistances on each side. So what their suggestion is that you hold the cardstock on either side and you bend it and kind of test to see if you can feel the, the resistance that the cardstock gives you. Then, once you have that, turn the cardstock around and feel if you get kind of the same resistance on that side as well. If you're anything like me, you'll probably need to do this quite a few times before seeing, you know, which side has the most resistance because I'm not particularly observant of those kinds of things. But this side does feel a little bit softer than that side. And that might be because of the directions of the fiber. Again, AC, if you are, are watching and you can confirm any of this, then please let me know. As an example, this way was slightly less resistant. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my cardstock on the mat like that. And I haven't tested it extensively myself because I've never really noticed a difference between the two. But if you're having problems with your cardstock, then that might be something that you can try as well. As I was going through this video, I created a free printable list that you can use to check off each of the things that I've spoken about in this video. If you want to grab that, there will be a link down in the description below. But if you want to watch some more cardstock tutorial videos, check out this playlist. Don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy this kind of tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, be kind to someone today. See you soon.